So Killing Floor 2's Christmas update 2021 is fast approaching and we have details about the two new outbreaks, the two new weapons, and some quality of life improvements they're making to Killing Floor. Hey guys, this is Chris with BNB Gaming. Welcome back and I hope you're doing awesome today. Thank you for all your support, all your likes, your shares, your comments. Definitely appreciate it. Now to start with guys, they're adding two new outbreaks in the Christmas update. The first new outbreak is called Boss Rush. In the blog post it reads, the lab is calling this one Boss Rush and all your favorites are coming right after one another. The Patriarch, the Matriarch, Hands, King Flesh Pound and the Abomination are rushing to see who can get to you and probably kill you first. They appear to be coming one at a time, but we suspect that with each new wave, the following boss will be even more motivated to kill you. So it's basically just going to be five waves. How is Dosh going to work? Are they just going to give you a base level of Dosh? Are we going to earn Dosh by killing trash as we're going through these boss waves? It should be interesting to find out here. In addition, it says, but we suspect with each new wave, the following boss will be even more motivated to kill you. My question is, will the difficulty increase with each boss? So maybe the Patriarch is on normal, Matriarch is on hard, maybe Abomination is on, you know, Abandon All Hope or something. As I'm thinking about this, my favorite setup for boss wave is Survivalist with Killer Watt and a Freeze Thrower, which you can run, you know, without increasing your weight, so you can have the medic grenades, or I like to run the Arc Generator with the Freeze Thrower. Personally, I think the Arc Generator is more powerful. I like to run it with Make Things Go Boom. For some reason, it seems like it's more powerful. Anyways, the reason I like this setup is one, you can freeze the bosses with the Freeze Thrower, so it's super useful on the Patriarch. As far as the Killer Watt or the Arc Generator goes, both of these will tear out the Matriarch and especially make quick work of the Edars with the Matriarch, so I found them both to be very useful. The second new outbreak is called Shrunken Heads. For the second outbreak, well, the codes keep saying something about a witch doctor having gotten their hands on some Zeds and shrunken their heads. <laughs> it has also been noticed that thanks to the sacrifice of a field agent, that those in proximity to this pack seem to be picking up the same affliction. We suspect that headshots will be ineffective against this lot, but the field agent also reported back that several Zeds appear to have new weak spots. Keep your shrunken eyes on the lookout. Now the smaller heads are not just cosmetic, it says that headshots are going to be ineffective and Zeds are going to have new weak spots. So I'm curious, are they going to be universal weak spots? So now all the weak spots are going to be in their chest or are they going to be in their knees or in their big, big toes? Should be fun to find out. Now as I'm thinking about the best build here, I'm thinking about Gunslinger with right side skills where you're able to focus on body shot damage. Now besides the two new weekly outbreaks, they're also doing some quality of life improvements here. The first one is they're adding a vote to pause option for endless mode and it says all participants are going to have to vote yes to pause. Another improvement they're making is to aim assist for controllers. It says in the blog post that adding to this, mercs who use controller will find that aiming around the head will be a bit more forgiving in helping you find your intended target, that being the head and not the chest. So keeping those fingers on the trigger and putting some rounds down range will now be more effective. Now along with that, they also say they are slightly improving the Vlad 1000 nail gun again. <laughs> it seems like, I don't know, once a year they like try and improve the nail gun. In addition, they also say they're working on make things go boom for a survivalist, and it says slightly improving it. Yeah, <laughs> go and improve that all you want to, fellas. <laughs> That's one of my favorite skills. And personally, I think it's OP already, because if you run explosive weapons with survivalist, you aren't going to do the high-end damage with that skill on. So you're not going to wreck flesh bounds and scrakes really fast with it. However, with certain explosive weapons, like for example, the Kaboom stick, you just get massive assists and kills with that skill. Now, besides the nail gun and make things go boom, 
They also are improving Abomination and King Fleshbound. Now besides the two new weeklies and the quality of life improvements, they are also of course are adding two new weapons in the Killing Floor 2 Christmas update. The first new weapon is called the HRG Stunner, which is a tier 4 weapon for SWAT. In the blog post it says, first off, we have a new tier 4 goodie for the SWAT, the HRG Stunner. This high powered gun lives up to its name with its 12 gauge solid steel slug rounds and its custom flash grenades. Its primary fire is perfect for knocking down holiday zeds getting too close and are the crowds getting way too close, switch to the alt fire grenades for a small explosive that will stun those in your way. So I think the HRG stunner is what SWAT players have wanted for a long long time here, a boss wave weapon. As I'm thinking about the stunner, rapid assault is getting me really excited because I'm just thinking about boss wave, stunner, shooting a matriarch in the face with this thing. <laughs> Should be fun. The second new Killing Floor 2 weapon, and this is the DLC slash paid weapon, is called the Dashin Gun. There is some confusion whether or not this weapon is for survivalist or every perk. In the SteamDB description it says, Turn your cash into bash. Dashin Gun, designed for the survivalist perk, comes with five unique weapon skins. However, in the blog post it says, The Dashin Gun is an off perk tier 2 weapon that will solely rely on your reserves of dosh as ammo. Fire your loads of money into zeds like bricks to do a solid amount of bludgeon damage or fire it at your teammate to give them 25 dosh per shot. We know you're wondering, as an off perk weapon, the doshing gun will work with select passives and skills. So is the doshing gun just for survivalist or is it for every perk? I asked Yushiro on Twitter and he said that it, the Dashin Gun, is an off perk weapon that will work with some skills and passives across the board, so every perk, and relevant survivalist skills and passives. Now that is really interesting. So what skills and passives does it work with? For example, Berserker, does it work with Smash? Does it work with Massacre? Does it work with Gunslinger skills? Which skills does it work with Gunslinger? <laughs> does it work with Rapid Assault with the SWAT perk? This should be interesting. Now as I'm thinking about the Dashing Gun, how is this going to work? Obviously I think this weapon was designed as an Endless Mode gun because as you get up further and further in Endless Mode eventually you just get so much dosh that what do you do with it? So maybe this weapon would be really good for that depending on how much damage it does. Besides that I think the reason they're working on make things go boom is maybe they're adding more damage to the Dashin Gun with that skill. One possible negative of the Dashin Gun changing up the formula of Killing Floor Floor 2. When you think about it, one thing that makes Killing Floor 2 special is your ability to share your dosh. So you have, you know, the really good players or the elite players or the ones that are getting lots of assists or whatever who have a ton of dosh on the boss wave. And one of the things about Killing Floor 2 is it's, I guess, it's part of our culture that we share our dosh on the boss wave. We share our dosh with new players when they come in or they're going to get wrecked. <laughs> So I'm curious how the Dashin Gun's going to affect that. Because if you're the top player, you've got, you know, two, three thousand Dash. Are you going to keep your Dash and use the Dashin Gun on the boss wave instead of sharing it with other players? Finally, they haven't officially announced what the new map is. But from everything I've heard in the community, it looks like it's going to be Carillon Hamlet, which is a community map made by Shea. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Are you excited about more Killing Floor 2 this Christmas? Are you excited about the HRG Stunner? What do you think about the Dashin Gun? Let me know what you think. For me, I'm really excited about both these new outbreaks. Hopefully Boss Rush is fun. I think Shrunken Heads is also going to be really fun just because it's going to change it up a little bit. As far as the weapons go, I'm really excited about the HRG Stunner. It sounds like 
what SWAT players have always wanted, something where they could use it on the boss wave. Generally speaking, most players learn to switch off of SWAT for the boss wave, so maybe that's why they finally gave the SWAT a boss wave weapon here. As far as the Dashin gun, in theory it sounds interesting. I don't know, is it going to be satisfying shooting a Zed with your Dash? Are they going to, you know, what effect's going to happen? Is it going to, you know, blow them up into chunks? Is it going to blow through them? It should be interesting. I don't know how this thing is going to work. I don't know how it's going to affect the overall flow of the game. It should be really interesting. My guess is we're going to get the PC beta here probably next week because generally speaking, they want the Christmas update to be coming out early December. So if you're on Xbox, PlayStation, we should be getting the update in early December, generally speaking, the first Tuesday of December. Now, as far as the future of Killing Floor, I'm curious whether or not we're going to get another season of Killing Floor 2 here, so another year of content. It looks to me we're getting to the end of the community maps here, the ones that won the mapping contest a couple years ago. So are they going to have another mapping contest? Or are they just going to buy maps as we're going along here? Or are they just going to move on to Killing Floor 3? So this is pure speculation on my part. But if we were going to get an announcement for Killing Floor 3, potentially we could get it at the Game Awards that should be happening in the early December. Otherwise, my guess and hope would be that we get another season of Killing Floor 2 here another seasonal guns, maps, etc. 